Good evening. I'm so glad that all of you are here tonight in this wonderful crowd. Um, I'm just going to say a few words about the Strand and then introduce our guests. Uh, for a moment of history, 93 years ago, my grandfather founded the Strand Bookstore in an area that was known as Book Row that ran along 4th Avenue. He, he founded it in the storm of the Depression and he defied the odds of surviving it while the 48 other bookstores shuttered. The store was then passed on to my late father, Fred Bass, who grew the store to a scale and popularity he never thought was possible. Now I'm the owner of The Strand, and the critic said, as a woman, I could never run the store, and we get wiped out by Amazon. So I want to thank you, this book-loving community, the audience, for helping us thrive through the ages, and thank you for being here. <laughs> So tonight I'm very excited to be welcoming Roz Chast to, and Patricia Marks um, to celebrate their brand new book, um, You Can Only Yell at Me for One Thing at a Time, <laughs> which uh, promises to solve every relationship problem. Um, this follows their previous collaboration, Why Don't You Write My Eulogy So I Can Correct It, <laughs> um, both have been pals of mine and have even hosted a dinner party in their honor at my, at my home, so I just love them. Um, Patty Marks has been writing for The New Yorker since 1989 and is a former writer for Saturday Night Live and Rug Rats, as well as the author of, of several best-selling books. Uh, she was the first woman um, elected to the Harvard Lampoon. And she's the recipient of the Guggenheim Fellowship, taught at Princeton, New York University, and Stony, Stony Brook University. Roz has been drawing cartoons since she can remember, and doing so in The New Yorker since 1978. Um, she's also written, uh, her drawings have been in Scientific America and the Harvard Business Review, amongst many others. Her graphic memoir, Can't We Talk About Something More Pleasant is a favorite of mine. It's the uh, honest, touching story of her elderly parents, something I am going through with my mother, um, which won the 2014 National Book Critics Circle Award and was a New York Times bestseller. And the New York Times also picked it as their, one of their books of the year. So between the two of them, They've shaped not only the pages of The New Yorker, but the lives and sensibility of countless readers, New Yorkers, and otherwise. So I'm thrilled to welcome back to the Strands Rare Book Room. So please join me in putting your hands together for Roz and Patricia. This, guess who this is? <laughs> we love sitting down. Yes, that's true. <laughs> we we're, we're, we're uh, in the right profession, yeah, I yeah. think, for people. We, that was the number one thing on my resume, is mm -hmm. that uh, very, loves to sit, yeah. um, we're sits very well. We're uh, trying to get it an Olympic sport. Yes, can cross legs, can sit uncrossed legs, anything. So this, this is us with our ukuleles. You'll uh, find out more about that later. Can you guys see over there at all? OK, good. Um, now I tap this, and nothing happened. Let's, I'll push it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, oh, good. OK, uh, well, this, we wrote this book together about couples. So this and is, yeah. yes. This is the first couple I knew. They're my parents. And, um, and they're, uh, this book is about Can couples and how to have arguments. And they look unhappy here. <laughs> and my, my theory is they don't like nature. And they're very near nature. Yes. And uh, yes. they're probably trying to figure out their getaway. 
They also might be distracted because they had a habit of before they got in the car, a long car ride, they discuss what they were going to fight about. So they might be doing yes. that. I think uh, Patty's father is actually cringing. Yeah. Uh, it's, and, and your mother is definitely like, it's very bright outside the house. My mother is pinching my father and saying, smile, because smile. We, we cared about looks. Yes. Um, and the, this is um, a photo, an old photo, of my parents on the right. That's my mother and my father. And the other couple on the left were my parents' best friends. And they actually introduced my parents. And this was, um, these were probably the four, the two couples that I met first in my life. Because Muriel and Murray, this other couple, were often over to the house. And Muriel was a very, they were an interesting couple. I think they actually show up a lot in my cartoons. Muriel sewed, she was a mathematician, but she sewed all of her own clothes. And you don't see a lot of 50-year-olds in sunsuits. Um, was she also a leprechaun? She, she, she was a very, she also, um, uh, she, I think she sort of invented this very primitive version of Facebook mm -hmm. where um, she had this, she made herself a skirt that had these clear pockets on it and she would put pictures of her friends <laughs> in the in the clear pockets and kind of she but if she was fighting with you she would take the, the photo out so she'd like unfriend you it was a very you know low, that, didn't, low. that didn't catch on no it did not it did not nor did su sunsuits for adults but you know i would have liked to see murray in a sunsuit like mm. all of them in sunsuits um this is sort of how patty and i met pretty yes. much this was um, the first piece I ever had published. It was in the Atlantic Magazine in around 1832. Yes, and, it was, when it was printed uh, on, uh, on lithographic stones, I yeah. believe. And sadly, it's a little relevant. And uh, it's uh, a humor piece. And when it was published, my mother called. And she said, I read your piece. And I said, uh-huh. And she said, it was so beautifully illustrated. <laughs> And she said, why don't you call the illustrator? Well, no one calls the illustrator, but they don't. I didn't know that. And also, I, I do what I'm told, so I did. Yes, yes. And nobody since then has mm -hmm. ever called me. Um, <laughs> but we had this very nice conversation. And it really was like Patty's mother sort of set us up on a play date. Um, it was kind of like going to the park and you know, you have a six year old and there's a little six year old over there and you say, she's six, you're six, go play. So, and we're still sort of on the play date. Yeah. Patty's mother was, was right, I think. Um, this is, uh, was our first collaboration. Um, and it, yeah, it's, uh, now everybody really hates me. It's about a little girl who is uh, punished for uh, hitting her brother, though she says she didn't hit him, she touched him hard, and she she decides she's going to stay in her room for the rest of her life, unless she's having some, unless they're having something good to eat tonight. In which case, it will be her last meal. And I think that that this book could probably not be published today because of the title. Yeah, probably. And this was the the first um, book that we worked on, and we had we went to second grade classes and probably, I mean, you could, maybe somebody here can top this in the Q&A, but we had two of our favorite questions. One was, they asked uh, both of us how many inches apart we lived. <laughs> <laughs> and then in Boston, a kid raised his hand and said, you live in New York, right? And we said, yes. And he said, do you know my grandmother? <laughs> <laughs> no. And then later on, he, he raised his hand. Do you know the Stearns? <laughs> and then this went on for a while until finally, do you know anybody? <laughs> and there was one kid who said, during one of these talks, he said, I think Patty is depressed. Yeah. And no, <laughs> and is she taking Ritalin? <laughs> <laughs> Um, this was another children's book collaboration. I mean, one thing about our children's books is that they really, 
I think that they may have more in common with like the cartoons that I grew up on, which none of them really had any, uh, they were not didactic. None of them had any lesson to teach anybody about anything. They were just, you know, the animators sort of having a really good time. And some of them were sort of wholesome, and some of them were just totally whacked out and bizarre. You know, those old Fleisch, uh, Max Fleischer studios. And I think you could say, that our books really have no particular lesson. They're just funny. I mean, I think, yeah. you know. I don't know if you're, we had a Newsweek review for this one, or one, no, the first one, that said there's no moral meaning or message. Yeah. And that probably was not meant as a compliment, but yeah. we took it as one. <laughs> we, do, we certainly did. Uh, yeah, so this, this, this book, I just, I think that might be my favorite of the children's books we've, we've done. Um, it, it's about this boy who really doesn't want to do like anything that like kids are supposed to do, like homework or brush his teeth or take medicine for when he's sick. Uh, and um, so he has, or write thank you notes. So what he really wants is a staff. He wants to sort of, you know, uh, farm out the, the grunt work. And um, so he has a, a person on his staff who writes thank you notes for him. And, yeah. uh, and he invented outsourcing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we have the lima bean man. And, uh, and um, this is a photo of us. See, now oh, I have, yeah. this, is, this is the thing, the, this thing that, you know, I, I would say there's this sort of scientific reason for this, that if you believe in parallel universes, there's this parallel universe where uh, Patty, <laughs> Sorry. Um, we take out our ukes and we can accompany yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> um, where Patty and I, uh, in this parallel universe, Patty and I have known each other since we were children in the Ukraine. And it's either Ukraine <laughs> or. Yeah. The, because the reason that um, it's called the Ukraine is because, well, I'm, a, I'm not sure which came first, but you know, the ukulele is their national instrument yeah. um, because of. U yeah. Ukraine, but we were, pa Patty was known for her scowl and yeah. I was known for my babushkas. Yeah, and we were both and known for our arms. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, because we, we had a second job uh, driving trucks. Yes, but I think that, remember when I had that like whole experience with the radiation? Yeah. And that I kind of like had a little discoloration for a little while, but then it went away, you know, and everything was fine. Um, so, so we, we, we have actually known each other yeah. since we were five or so, and we're still, you know, playing our ukuleles, as you can see. Um, this was, it, we, uh, we have, we formed this band yeah, this is in our, the same parallel universe. And this is our um, breakout album. Yes. And, uh, uh, our, our band is called Ucular Meltdown. Yeah. And, uh, and our first, our breakout album was Duck and Cover. Yeah, um, some historians claimed that it made the um, Cold War worse. Yeah. We're very proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's a photo of us uh, yeah. with, with Ed Sullivan. We were on, the, we had, oh God, we had good oh, times. Oh, what a career we, we had. had. It was amazing. Um, this was the original cover yeah. of uh, the freewheeling Bob Dylan. Um, it was, uh, they, I think that they thought, well, we, we certainly had very perky breasts. Per yeah, we, that we was our perky bosom face. Yes, yes, very, very perky. But I think we were a little too perky even for Bob. Yeah. Who was, he was more like a downbeat sort of guy, and we, we look, look a little jolly yeah. um, or but happy or something. We used to hang out with him. We were the people who told him to go nasal. Yes, well, it yes. Wonders for him. Um, and here we are at Woodstock. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we, we, the problem was, and nobody told us, I can't believe this, they yeah. didn't tell it. We were facing the wrong way. Yeah. I think so, all of those people were in the wrong place. Yeah, I know. Well, you should have just switched yeah. them around. So, Everybody, come this way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and here we are on Johnny Carson. Yeah. Um, That's what we... we yeah. We gave up our necks that day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, for, we gave up our necks for Johnny. Yeah. Um, and uh, this was th the collaboration we did before the book, um, uh, You Can Only Yell at Me for One Thing at a Time. And this was, uh, why don't you write your eulogy for me? My, why don't you write my eulogy now so I can correct it? And these were things that Patty's mother actually said. Yeah. And they were so, including so that. good. In including retrospect, I should have brought you up in a warm and loving home. <laughs> and I have to say, 
I'm really glad she didn't because that would have been made, made me yeah. so embarrassed. <laughs> I know. It would have been embarrassing for everybody. <laughs> um, but the, she had so many great sayings. And it really, because Patty would quote her sometimes, like, you never wear red and black together, uh-oh, because, <laughs> because um, it, it makes you look like a drum majorette. Like, and she said it was like a bad thing, but like, no. really. The, n- the outfit I wear most yes, on our book tour yes, is the red and black. red and black, so. red and black. And no. I just see nothing. What a rebel it. I am. I know. Um, or plaids should never be based in white. And I realized when she said that, that, I totally yeah. agree with her. You're like it's, pre-plaid. Yeah, it's like a uh, factory mistake. Um, so this is our new collaboration, the newest book that came out today, today's pub date, and it's advice, rules for couples. Uh, and um, we're going to show some, oh, well, so here are a few famous couples in history. Romeo There's and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. And uh, we, we did notice that Juliet, dis- Despite the story of William Shakespeare, Juliet looks like she's pushing Romeo away. <laughs> yeah, so we're trying to like analyze this and wonder, maybe that's like not Romeo, yeah. maybe that's like Maybe Ed. she said, I didn't know you, you were going to wear those tights. Yeah, <laughs> where it's like, go away, Romeo is coming. It really does look like she's, you know, get out of here, Ed, <laughs> you know. Um, here is another famous couple in history. Glamorous. Uh, here are some couples that are maybe not quite so famous yeah. in history. It's Patty and her boyfriend and me and my husband. Okay. It's like we're the I, blind ones. I have to say this since he's here and he doesn't usually, he usually looks much better. Yeah. But, <laughs> and he, you can, it's proof, he much, looks much better. But I was the one choosing the photo <laughs> and I look good in this one. Yes, you so do. You do. I'm you not do. kind of, I'm not kind yeah. of a what would Jesus do yeah. P- yeah. selector yes. of photos. Well, who's, who's talking? It's yeah. you or him. Yeah. You, know? you can he, always he, tell who picked the photo. Yeah, it, it's true. It's true. And we always kind of look more or less like that. We're just a little older. Uh, and here are some of the things in the book. Never say yes to someone who proposes marriage on a jumbotron. Yeah. Because <laughs> um. your divorce will be on a jumbotron. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you get to kvetch for the th- for three minutes, and then your time is up, unless you're in a Chekhov play, in which case you have two hours. <laughs> um, come up with tender names for each other, and we have some examples: my assistant, um, emergency contact, uh, Cracker Barrel, Garfunkel, Ben Hur, Pimentos, G- Giblet or Giblet? I can never remember. Is giblet. Oh. Is it giblet? Giblet? I okay, say, giblet. I say giblet. All right, all right. I think probably giblet is right, but for some reason I am focused. I've, it, uh, all right, all right. <laughs> Lil, Lil Advil and Badoni Bold. Um, Beware of anyone takes you on a first date to a walk in dermatology <laughs> clinic or a crime scene. It's a, uh, yeah. Uh, do not we walk 10 feet ahead of your person unless you are checking for landmines. <laughs> <And laughs> it's more fun being the pessimist than the optimist, so take turns. <laughs> and we have the guy going, we need to pull the plug, and she says, but it's just a bunion. <laughs> um, this is very true, and the lesson here is, you know, very early on, claim being the pessimist because you know if like you're trying to park the car one person will s- say we're never going to get a parking space and even though you agree you have to say sure we are and you have to be all cheerful about yeah. it yeah well that terrible. is really you can't it, it that well speaking of, of parking i mean a friend of mine calls this the parking space theory of life that uh with children they don't all have the same personalities that if like if the first kid is very extroverted then that parking space is taken <laughs> so you know, the other one is, is the introvert. So that, it's the same yeah. thing, I think, in, in marriages, that if one yeah. person is very, my husband is very optimistic. He, doesn't, he thinks for sure that Trump is going to be defeated. I'm like, no, I'm like Eeyore, no, 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 he's going to win. Uh, everything is lost. Uh, we're going to hell in a handbands again. Uh, 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 who am I doing? This, this is yours, I think. Oh, um, oh we believe this, oh, this so one. strongly. Oh, yeah. Once a week, throw out something of his while he is sleeping. He will not miss it. And, you know, 
Once yeah. a week at the least. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, this is this is definitely something that happens in my couple world where I'm a thrower outer and my husband is a saver and I have to sometimes like tell him do not go through the trash yeah. do not yeah. like pull out yeah. what I have thrown it's away dangerous in and, there and, and sometimes well I think I actually sort of started this when I was a kid that I grew up in this apartment that was filled with all this crap and my parents never threw anything out. And my father was a French and Spanish teacher in high school. We had all these textbooks in the apartment. And when I was mad, and the, okay, so it was an apartment, and at the end of the hallway was an incinerator room and um, with a chute. And uh, when I was very, very angry, I've never really been good at like direct confrontation. Um, so when I was very angry, I would take a textbook and like walk to the end of the hall and throw it down the incinerator chute. But it's very important yeah, it was, you deny it no matter oh, what. Oh, totally, I have no totally. Idea. I'll, I'll go, you go, and you say, I'll help you look. Yeah, 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 <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I have thrown away like one sock of my husband's. <laughs> like just so like, it's kind yeah. of like, I can't find the other sock. It's oh, that's be terrible. Here somewhere. That's awful, you know? It's uh, got to be, yeah. Oh, you, oh. Yeah. you are allowed to be late twice. After that, if the relationship is to thrive, you must move westward to another time zone. Yeah. And this is, Roz and I get along extremely well, but most importantly, we're, we're neurotically early. Like, we think you should get to the airport a week early because you, you yes. never know you if never there's know. gonna be traffic. Yes, exactly. And I don't mind being early. The no. worst is to be sort of paired up with somebody who likes the thrill of spending a few more minutes yeah. at home checking their email yeah. and it's, it's just- Don't worry, we'll get a taxi that goes to speed of light. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is really important. Yes. And because the worst thing is when someone screams throughout the house. So you have to, yes. step one, divide your house into zones. Step two, no yelling from one zone to another. If someone breaks this w rule, you whisper, you're not in my zone, I can't hear you. Yeah. And Paul and I do this, but we have, one of the uh, fights we have pretty much every hour is what constitutes zone? Because I feel, yeah that the bathroom next to the bedroom, there are two separate zones. So we, we're gonna have to get a lawyer. Yes, well, I, it's kind of like the fractal pattern of fighting. It's mm -hmm. like every fight branches off into two new fights and then those fights kinda- And then get, loops back again. Yes, it loops. Um, remember, if you were single, there'd be nobody to check you for ticks. And uh, yes, kinda horrible. Um, uh. Oh, oh. Uh, we can't, we really, really, this matters to us a lot. Yes. If you are the wordmeister in the relationship, don't correct the other person's every mistake. Save it for when you cannot stand it anymore. And that, she's saying, that was the last irregardless. <laughs> I'm leaving you. We well, just heard today just, that yeah. irregardless, that, that, that Merriam-Webster accepts that. It's, yes. Yes, I, I know, I know. And the reason that we were given yes. is that it's a regional thing. A southern regional. Southerner, so we're, yes. se we're seceding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's the last straw. It's like not only is gay marriage illegal in those states, but they also think irregardless yeah. is an actual yeah. word. It's, it's just the worst thing ever, I think. Um, this is you. Uh, no one should foist a pet on anyone else. And the guy is saying, look, she likes you. <laughs> it's, I don't know if you can see, it's a horse. <laughs> one of those apartment horses. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. one of you better learn how to fold a fitted sheet or else invite Martha Stewart to be your permanent house guest. <laughs> but the truth is that nobody can fit to, maybe except, Martha Stewart can except, hold a fitted sheet. Except for those people on TV who demonstrate it. That's probably oh, yeah. like YouTube. all they know how to do. Yeah. You know, it's probably like they don't know how to set the table. Mm. They don't know how to balance their checkbook. <laughs> they might not even really know how to quite cut up their own food, <laughs> but they know how to fold a fitted sheet. <laughs> and it's, it's like origami, you know, mm. you get up to like step two and then the whole thing is just one big ball. 
Um, this me? Yeah. <laughs> if one person continues to buy stuff from Amazon 10 times a day, even though there's no more room in the house for one more thing, then the buyer has to rent a storage unit and live in it. <laughs> oh, we've, yeah. yeah, that would be, that would be good. Queen size beds, king size blankets. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, oh, this and is this, one of my favorites. Uh, if you must breathe, don't breathe so loudly. If you must breathe so breathe so loudly, do it outside. Well, I don't know if anybody has ever lived with someone in a small space, but it's as if they're mic'd. Yeah. You know, you go, really, I just don't want to listen to that soup being sipped. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's the chewing, the yeah. breathing. Yeah. It's like, do you have to eat? Yeah. Do you have yeah. to? Do you have to exist? <laughs> uh, wine helps. <laughs> um, uh, oh, we believe in this too. I mean, everyone believes in this. Let's face it. Marriage is one of you secretly turning the thermostat up, and the other secretly turning it down until one of you dies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is definitely, I mean, my apartment in the city does not have a thermostat, but where I live with my husband, when I am there, there's definitely a thermostat, and he's from Minnesota, so he likes it very chilly. He thinks, like, it's normal to have your house at 64 degrees in the winter, and it's just very, very cold, so there's definitely this kind of, like, little, like, fight going on, with, which we don't ever discuss. We just kind of do it. Um, Oh, so we're finished with the slides from the book, but this I'm going to try to read and not block anybody here. Um, this is uh, an actual fight that, uh, or based on an actual fight that I had with my husband. And I did a series for a while for The New Yorker um, called Mixed Marriage, because basically it's not so much like just two people together. I think what distinguishes a, a, a a, a regular, like Patty and I are friends, but we don't live together. When you're living with another person, there's a kind of familiarity and a, a strangeness where you get into the weirdest kind of fights. I mean, I've been married since 1984. So, okay, my husband came home and he, with these like giant grapes that he was like very, very proud of. Like they were, I don't know, organic also maybe? I don't know what. They were just the gi giant. And he put them in a bowl and he says, did you try these grapes I just, I just bought? And this, the woman says, I didn't care for them. They were too big. <laughs> and he goes, what are you talking about? How can grapes be too big? Well, the skin to pulp ratio was all wrong. <laughs> they were too bursty. I didn't, I didn't like it, it was just weird. And I kept picturing, and this was almost like the worst, this was like the underlying sort of badness. Um, I kept picturing a farmer thinking, I'm gonna grow grapes the size of apples. <laughs> and that depressed me. <laughs> and, and the husband says, that by itself makes, you, makes me doubt everything you have ever said. <laughs> and he goes, what is it with you and food? These pancakes are granular. <laughs> These green beans taste like my grandmother's apartment. <laughs> this taffy smells unfamiliar. <laughs> and actually, unfamiliar was my father's word to describe food that was terrible. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he would taste, he would like, be at the Chinese restaurant or something, and he'd be like eating the mugu gai pan, and he'd go, you know, this water, <laughs> the water chestnut, <laughs> sorry, this water chestnut tastes unfamiliar. <laughs> and you'd know, like he was just, it was like, there was like, that, that was the tip of the iceberg of badness. You knew that there was a whole, you know, thing underneath of, um, and he says, you and your parents are all nuts. And she says, don't drag my folks into this. Um, and uh, this is a cartoon. This is how to drive your man crazy in bed. Uh, and I really have some good tips on that. Uh, what exactly is the flavor of Dr. Pepper? Um, 
Do you love me as much as you did when you married me? Did you ever have this ringing in your ear? Whatever happened to Dwight Gooden? How do you, how do you make a magnet? I have a many, many magnet questions. Um, which is better, plasma or high def? This was from a while ago. And this is the last slide. This is, uh, I don't know if you, can, if you can see it over there. It's, it's kind of the state. That's, that's the last of the slides. And, and the next portion of our <laughs> entertainment. Yes. We are going to now, play are our ukuleles. How are we going to do this? Okay, okay this might gonna... take a second yeah. to set up. Um, take the water. Or, yes, we'll move these things. I wish we could, like. Isn't this fun to watch? Yes. <laughs> right. But what are we doing oh. for the m microphones? Um, do you want holders? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Oh, I think somebody want... said oh. one. one. Oh. Oh, oh, yeah, good. that's perfect. Right. Perfect. Okay. Believe me, this isn't going to be worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I need to warn you, uh, if your expectations are over here, lower them. Lower them so your hand is basically brushing the floor. And okay. have a drink. We do very well yes. with drunk audiences. Oh, God, yes. God, yes. We should have really. All right. So um, we don't exactly play ukuleles, but we own them. <laughs> yes, we do, we do. And this is, you know, again, in the parallel universe where we have had yeah, our band. We're a very famous, famous band. Yes, Ukula Meltdown. Okay. Here is uh, one yeah. of our songs. Okay. On your mark, get set, go. Park, park, park your car, kind of near the curb. Ay, 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 you just bumped into Herb. <laughs> okay. And um, okay. This is, you know, thematically right for the night. It's about a couple, and yes. uh, it's called Freddie and Joni. On your on your mark, get set, go. Freddie and Joni were lovers. Frankly, they barely had sex. They'd been together forever. So now they preferred Netflix, but he loved her so. And she loved him back. Joni, she said to her, Freddy, turn up the thermostat, please. He said, woman, you're gonna cremate me. She said, it's like a polar freeze, though they suffered so. But they're still in love. What happened next? Get ready. Ain't some fictional tale. It ended with a conviction, and one of them was thrown in jail, and one was dead, <laughs> and, and the, the other, other in cuffs. Freddy, he had been napping. Joni raised the heat a degree. Freddy woke up, he was steaming. And he went on a shooting spree, then he cried and cried. Sad. For he loved her so. He really did. He really did. Freddy is locked up in Fresno. He's there for the rest of his life. He's, He's in bliss because his cell is unheated. Now his toes have the bad frostbite, still he misses her so. But you don't miss him back. There's no fairy tale ending. Lordy, it makes us blue. Still, we can't deny the moral, cause it's undeniably true. You want to stay alive? You got to live apart. <laughs> All right. oh. that, was, that was such a bad fight. We're going to take a break from relationships. Uh, and, uh, well, not really. It is a relationship. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Okay, te forget what I said. Okay. Uh, on your mark, get set, go. Mary had a comfort lamb, comfort lamb, comfort lamb. Mary had a comfort lamb who was a lunatic. And, and everyone who Mary met, Mary met, Mary met. Everyone who Mary met, the lamb was sure to kick. She, she took the lamb to Spain one day, Spain one day, Spain one day. She took the lamb to Spain one day. It sat in C12B. 
it, it made the pilot curse and cry, curse and cry, curse and cry. It made the pilot curse and cry, and then it went wee wee. The lamb now has a comfort pig, comfort pig, comfort pig. Lamb now has a comfort pig, plus a case of PTSD. Okay. We're or all play just done with the song. Yes, you guys have been yeah. very patient. Yes. Okay. As they say at the doctor, you'll feel a little discomfort, then it'll be over. Yeah. Um, this we just this is a new one. Yes. And that that is another way to say we don't play it very well. Yes. well we're trying. We're trying. Okay. 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 We're your, slow. Slow. Real slow. Okay. On People your mark. Be here for the next yeah. hour. No, no, you get won't. set, go. I Ooh. say nuclear. I say nuclear. I say Nuclear. And I say nuclear. 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 Don't blow the whole world up. I like butter. I like butter. I like Buddha judge. I like Buddha judge. Butter. Butter. Buddha judge. Buddha judge. Buddha judge. Let's make that guy judge. Which guy? That one. That guy. Yeah. He's judging. Yeah. Okay. okay. I Money. need coffee. coffee. I need coffee. Some need coffee. Even coffee. 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 Let's call the whole song off. Fine. Whatever Fine. you want. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. And finally. Finally, Our we left. speak for this song speaks for everybody. Yes. On your mark, get set, go. Slow. Right? Slow, yes. Oh, give us a drink. Not, Not a, a drink, drink from the sink, but, but a drink from a Western saloon. Or maybe some wine of any old kind to delude us. We're crew. Questions? Well, now we've got to figure out how to. Oh, right. I remember the little gizmo is oh, over here. There's my three, and I'll use my four. Oh, well. All right. Even though it's more as red? I know, it's disturbing. Okay. <laughs> We have questions if you don't, so <laughs> that should scare you. Uh, have any of these um, uh, drawings appeared in the New Yorker? Yes, book? the one, the, the, oh, not, not the, the cartoons, both of the cartoons, the cartoons uh -huh. all did. Oh, but in the box. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do your husbands find you funny? And if, <laughs> if they do, do you like that or do you want them not to find you funny? I have, oh, I have, and are they go, funny? I have a loophole answer to that one. I'm not married. <laughs> um, I, I think my husband and I find each other funny. Um, I mean, sometimes I don't think that he's trying to be funny, but he'll say something. I, well, one time um, <laughs> he was... He was we had a dishwasher. We were having a. We always have dishwasher loading fights. I think this is a pretty typical <laughs> thing with couples. And he told me once that um, he said, "You you load the dishwasher like a chimpanzee." And then he demonstrated. He, he said it was like somebody just kind of um, took the plates and just went like, you know, like this, like just threw them in. And, and it made me laugh so hard that even though he was insulting me, like really terribly, um, it made me laugh anyway. And so. I, I am an extremely shallow person, so I would not be with someone who I didn't think was funny, or, but more important, that didn't think I was funny. Yes, yes. Shallow and narcissistic and selfish. Yeah. Well, I think if you can, would describe you know, me. even if you hate each other, if you can make each other laugh, you know, that's, mm -hmm. you know, a very important thing. Uh, here's here's yeah. a good segue. Oh, so Where'd you the get those great boots? Zara. <laughs> what are your favorite and inside the jokes and the that you share with your partners? Uh, inside jokes. Well, hmm. <laughs> Paul, do you have any? Inside jokes. Inside well, jokes. I, I know one time um, 
my husband and I were at, we were actually at a, a spaghetti dinner at, um, uh, it was like a bluegrass concert thing, banjo music and stuff, at uh, this church in the area. And um, there was this woman sort of at the spaghetti dinner, and she had this kind of funny face. Not that we're like such, like either of us are like these great like plates of you know beauty or anything like that, but um, he did this little caricature of her that, and he's not an artist, he's a writer, um, but something about his drawing made me laugh so hard that I almost like just died, and I still have it up in my studio, so I don't know if that's an inside the joke. The thing but about like I can, inside jokes yeah. is, Almost by definition, they're not funny to anybody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I look at the drawing, it still makes me laugh. I, you know, so I don't know. Yes. You, in the yellow, <laughs> our editor, what? Uh, how does your collaboration work? <sighs> you know, Ooh. for the sake of the book, it would be great if I could say we have the biggest fights. But we really never do. We yeah. even, even when we share, we're on a train row, we're very good about the armrest. Yes, that's true. We don't. <laughs> We don't. I, th I think one of the big things oh. is that the, er, the getting to places early, we're both very, uh, as Patty said earlier, like neurotically prompt. So it's not like, you know, you, when you're on a tour or traveling with somebody and the other person really likes to, you know, play it really close to the edge or anything but, like that. Uh, but I hate to be serious, and I won't for long, but the, one of the many great things about collaborating with Roz well, in addition to I can brag about the book without bragging about myself, because I can too. say it looks me so too. good. I can say this is hilarious because but Patty wrote it. We both do, Roz is a wonderful writer, and so she can give me suggestions, and I, um, I Patty think has of a great myself visual that, sense. So I can, I, can, I can give visual suggestions. It's kind of like we're, we're each other's sous chef. From yes. Afar. Yes. Yes. There's so it works very well yeah. that way because we, um, but we don't disagree about anything really. No. Yeah. No. And I think that you, we both, you know, when you're working on a collaboration with somebody, I think we share the goal of trying to make it as good as possible. So that yeah. if something, if I disagree yeah. with Patty, it's not because like I'm like mad at her yeah. or something. It's like I really don't think right. for the project it's the right, right. thing. So we have and no we trust egos each about other. it. Yeah. yeah. We trust each other so the criticism mm -hmm. is really not, you know, it's it's because we both want the thing to be as good as possible. Mm -hmm. It feels like you've been twins in another life that have been re in the reunited. Ukraine. In the <laughs> Ukraine. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the or a Ukraine yeah. anyway. <laughs> One of the yeah. many Well we 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 right. To, just not to play the blame game, but Roz <laughs> said Ukraine first, and some <laughs> angry person in the audience said, why do you call it the Ukraine? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I don't know, <laughs> which is my answer. Yeah, to, to differentiate things. it from a Ukraine. Yes, yes, yes. You know, the, the, the big one. <laughs> Every <clears throat> situation looks like it's coming from one person, so to build on that question, uh, does the drawing come first or the idea come first or you complete each other? Well, um, uh, in well, this case, the, the writing yeah, came the first. Writing, but yeah, but yes. sometimes, I mean, we'll, we'll sort of think about the project together and conceive of it, and then I'll write some lines and some of them stolen verbatim from Roz, <laughs> and then I will have writing uh, visual suggestions, illustrated suggestions, and Roz takes them or doesn't take them, and then, and it goes back and forth yeah. that way. Yeah, I mean, there's probably, we probably exchanged like 500 emails at yeah. least about things in the book, so there's a lot of, lot of back and forth. There's somebody back there. We also keep the same hours, which That's helps. That's true. <laughs> That's true. We stay up till... Um, like 18 o'clock. Yeah, a million, a million, ten, yeah. Were, were, were there any that didn't make the book that you um, wished made the book? Any illustrations or writings? There were a few, but I don't really oh, remember. Oh, I can't remember any. Yeah. No. <laughs> can, can you tell us about the submission process for um, getting your uh, drawings in the New Yorker? What, you know, how do you get on the cover? How do you, do they ever reject you? What's that like? Um, well, I have this little altar 
in my apartment, and I, no, uh, um, well, I, uh, let me see, they have, I think now you can actually, anybody can come in and see the uh, cartoon editor, who's the wonderful Emma Allen, um, and submit, people don't just do like one cartoon a week, we, for some reason, since it has started, uh, since I started, we each, all the cartoonists, we submit a group of cartoons every week. And it, for some reason, it has always, as far as I know, been called The Batch. As in, like, are you working on your batch? Have you turned in your batch? You know, did, stuff, that, that thing. So it, it's a batch. My, I try to submit six or seven cartoons every week. Sometimes I, I at this point, I, I don't go in in person. I, um, I work from my house in Connecticut, and it's, I, don't, I, hate, I hate actually going in in person. I hate somebody looking through my work in front of me. It's mm. just disgusting and embarrassing, and I don't want them to see my needy little face. <laughs> um, it's mm. just embarrassing. So I submit them as a, as a PDF, um, and a lot of people do. Uh, so, and then sometimes I sell one, sometimes I don't sell any. Once in a blue moon, I sell two. Uh, but it's, it's funny, I remember uh, Bob Mankoff, who was the cartoon editor before Emma Allen, um, told me that when he was an undergrad at NYU, he was studying psychology, and uh, he did this experiment with rats, where there were these three cages of rats, and, uh, and there was like this mechanism that distributed pellets, and um, there was the first cage with the rats where uh, every time they pressed the lever, a pellet came out. And after a while, the rats would get kind of tired of doing it, and they would do it every once in a while. They were like not that excited about it. Then there was the second cage, the rat would press the lever, no pellets would ever come out. Hmm. And then they would just stop after a while, and maybe like they'd go to, a, I don't know what happened. They did, I think they like took them away before they died. Did, did nobody get on my case about this, mm -hmm. so I don't know. <laughs> the third <laughs> cage though, it was intermittent distribution of pellets. So pellet, pellet, no pellet, no pellet, no pellet. Oh my God, they hate me. No pellet, no pellet. Three pellets. One pellet, two pellets, one pellet. Just like completely random. And those rats would keep pushing that lever until their little rat arms fell off. <laughs> and I sometimes think about that and I think that's what New Yorker cartoonists, that's what we are. Yeah. We are the rats in the third cage, you know, it's, because it's we can't figure it out. It's the definition of Stalinist terrorism. <laughs> yes, it, it is. And yet we have no alternative. Mm. I cannot think of anything else I, the, the, any other thing to reason I would get out of bed. <laughs> so, uh, you just know, for I'm, the pellet. It's just for the pellet. <laughs> it's for the pellet. Uh, I was just curious, when you were writing this, obviously it's very funny, but did you feel a range of emotions? Like, did it maybe make you feel more romantic at a certain point, or were nah. you just cracking yeah. up the whole time? No. Okay. <laughs> That's what I guessed, but I was yeah. kind of hoping for a gem. Yeah. See, I think another thing is that Patty and I, we don't, we, we're just robots, really. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, Yes. Before you get to the final drawing, are there a lot of preliminary drawings? The, the question was, before I get to the final drawing, are there a lot of preliminary drawings? It really depends on, it depended on the, th on the thing, on the, because uh, some, on the, the line, because some of them, I had the idea right away, and I did a pencil sketch and inked it in, and it was fine. And others, I do a pencil sketch, and I start inking, and I think, no, this is bad. Um, and then I try to patch it, and then it would get worse, and then I'd realize, no, 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 bad. So I have to start it again. So it really varied a lot. Hi. Um, do you ever do comics that are just for your partner or your spouse? Do I ever do comics that are just for my partner? Yeah. Um, if he paid me, I would. Uh, <laughs> Just what I was thinking. <laughs> are you working digitally or analog or both? He said, uh, how are you two so beautiful and intelligent? <laughs> and tall. And tall and tall. And young, yes, it's amazing. It's amazing that you know to be contributing mm -hmm. from to the New Yorker since 1978, and yet I'm I, I'm only 28. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do I work? The question was, um, do I work digitally or analog or both? And 
both, really. Um, I have an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil that I am madly in love with. Uh, but most of the stuff, the drawings in here I did on paper. The cartoons in The New Yorker, I do work on paper. I think partly because I like having an original. Um, and I like both mediums. They both have things to offer. Um, I, I'm really, I'm also, I really do like Instagram. It's the only social media thing I do. There's a lot of artists, a lot of cartoonists and graphic designers and stuff who post their stuff. And um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do digitally that I could do analog, but it would just take so long and it'd be so boring. And I don't know, this is really, there's a lot of things that, that are fun about it. All right. Hi. Um, so this book is uh, Rules for Couples, but I was wondering if um, you had any tips for how to recognize that someone is relationship material to get into a couple. <laughs> well, um, no, they're not. There is <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to really uh, think about one's standards. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Um, and that's a no. We yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I will tell you that my first date with my husband, he took me to see Eraserhead, and uh, a very at uh, the, the midnight show at the Elgin Cinema. So it sort of dates me, but whatever. Um, and, uh, and I thought, yeah, that's the guy for me. Any last last questions? Can we ask a question of the audience? What is the stupidest or silliest fight you ever had with your partner? Anybody have any good ones? Installing a car seat. Oh, installing uh, a car seat, yeah, yeah. Oh. My husband was sure that he figured out how dinosaurs became extinct. And the scientists didn't know, but he did. And it lasted three days on our car trip to Canada. Wow. I don't know. He's like, I do, I swear to God, I do. And it was, if I still bring it up, he still will get upset about it. So what was his theory? Now I'm curious. Did you, anybody hear this back here? Okay, the qu it was like his, her husband figured out how dinosaurs became extinct. And um, they were... I listen. And oh, believed you, only he knew. Only, scientists yeah. were wrong. He knew better than every scientist on the planet in the history of paleontology, um, but I wouldn't give him... I wouldn't give him the uh, the opportunity to explain it because it was so ridiculous. I mean, the fight. It's like, well, let me just tell you, like, no, I'm not wasting my time listening. Like, that will come up, and he will still get upset about it. That's very funny. Um, my husband steals my iPhone chargers. He, go, he travels all the time and claims he didn't do it. So I've gotten to the point where I, I, they ha everything in the house is labeled with my name on it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> do you label the food in the refrigerator? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank, thank you very much for, for coming. Thank you. So Roz and Patty will sign copies of their, of their book over, books over here. We also have the, um, this one, too. And um, just thank you all for such an exuberant e evening. Hey, guys, it's me, the Taskmaster. Uh, if you wouldn't mind listening to me for a moment, if you are satisfied with your evening,